Hey friends, it's Mel. Welcome back to my kitchen and welcome to another What's for Dinner. Tonight I'm bringing you three different casseroles that I made this week. I think you're going to love them all. So sit back, relax, grab you some apple cider, and let me do the cooking. Tonight's video is extra special because it's in collab with my friend Amanda from Faith, Food, and Family. Amanda is an excellent cook. She's also doing casseroles this week. Be sure to go over and check Amanda out. I'll leave you a link to her video and her channel in my description box. I know you're going to love the things that she makes. I have found so many good recipes watching Amanda's channel. She is a real sweetie. And if you're here from Amanda's, thank you for stopping by. And I hope you'll stay and become part of my family here too. Tonight, I'm going to give you a real life, night in the life, I guess, of a working mama. This is a quick go-to meal that you can just keep the stuff on hand for all the time. This is going to be chicken casserole. On the side, we're going to have mashed potatoes, green beans, and carrots. And here's everything I'm using. Anyway, I'm going to show you when I put this whole meal together. I did get all my ingredients out. That's half the battle right there. And I'm going to time it and see how long it takes me to get it on the table. And this is a meal some people might think less of this i would never be ashamed of this meal my family loves this meal sometimes instead of potatoes we throw macaroni and cheese just box macaroni and cheese out here with it sometimes we have both but hey i'm not embarrassed by this this is a meal that my family loves this is something that's quick and easy everybody needs these kind of meals in their back pocket and y'all keep telling me this that you like my meals because they're easy because they're quick and it's simple ingredients so i'm gonna listen to you here we go all right you can see the oven's preheating and it's 4 29 p.m the first thing i'm doing is just draining off these cans of chunk chicken breast and i'm going to try to reserve that that's kind of gross looking but it tastes great I forgot the first step was to grease your casserole pan. Always when I'm trying to hurry, I forget steps. <laughs> so I'm going to grease my little pie plate up real good. And really, this one can of chicken probably would have been fine and plenty enough. But I already opened the second one, so I threw it in there too. I just like to chunk it up real good because it does come in like big chunks so I always try to like shred it up and make it just a little bit smaller now we're going to work on part of our filling you take one can of cream of chicken soup some mayonnaise it's probably half a cup I kind of eyeball this and some milk what's that look like maybe a third a cup start with less and then you can always add more if you need to and I go ahead and I put my salt and pepper in this creamy soupy mixture that I'm going to be putting over my casserole I just find that this is the best place to season this little dish and just gonna mix all that up and get it nice and smooth And then we're going to spread it out over that layer of chicken. And you can see this is just a regular size pie plate. And that thing was full of chicken. I always like to throw on just a nice little handful of shredded cheese, Swiss or cheddar, whatever you like. But I like Swiss and cheddar best of all on this little casserole. And that little bit of cheese, it's like when the chicken pot pie, it just gives it a little something extra. And then I like to use this Pepperidge Farm stuffing mix. And this is why you're saving that extra juice that come out of that canned chicken. Because we're going to pour it over the top of this. Now if you had chicken broth, 
that's perfect. Do you some chicken broth? If not, just melt you some butter and, you know, mix in a little water or something. Just something to get it juicy. You're going to try to cover the best you can the stuffing mix because that stuffing's very dry. So you want to try to get it moist so it will cook up and soften up. I love this chicken casserole recipe. This is a good friend of mine. Her mom is Stella. This is her recipe and I love it. Preheat my oven to 375 and then I cover this with aluminum foil. This was so quick to put together that my oven hadn't even preheated yet. But I do put it in for about 30 to 40 minutes with the aluminum foil over the top. Now, I think I showed you my greasy green beans last week, but just for old time's sake, here you go, can of green beans. I don't drain them, I put the juice in there. A big tablespoon or so of butter, some oil, salt and pepper. Crank it up, cooking hard, cut it down to simmer and just let them cook down. brown sugar carrots. My husband loves these and it's just a can of carrots. I don't drain them. I put a little bit more butter in them than I put in my green beans and then I like to put in some brown sugar and you're going to do the same thing with these. Crank them up, get them to boiling pretty good and then cut them back and just let them simmer till they get nice and gooey. Now I'm taking the cover off of my chicken casserole here and I'll show you. You can see it's starting to just brown up just a little bit. And after I take that aluminum foil off, I bake it another 10 to 15 minutes uncovered and look how pretty and brown that comes out. And then I've boiled two cups of water and I'm just making some instant mashed potatoes. And I'm just gonna doctor them up like I do my real mashed potatoes. <laughs> salt and pepper butter and i had oh maybe a fourth of a block of cream cheese if that that i threw in there mix it up good and it tastes next best thing to homemade mashed taters Oh, and I about forgot, I did throw some milk in there because these were um, not as creamy as I wanted. If you want to go back, I have a dedicated video to this chicken casserole where I tell you a little bit more about Stella. And there you see, 527. And look, I surprised you. I just, uh, after talking about that macaroni and cheese, we had to have some. This is a yummy meal. And this is also the recipe that I'm called on to make whenever we serve for funerals at our church. It's so homey and comforting. And this meal right here, my daughter's friends, when they come over, they love this meal right here. And it is so easy and quick nothing to it but I don't know something about it is just comforting it's just all of our favorite little things there but done in a quick easy way and this is all stuff that you could have shelf stable all the time to throw this together in a pinch
I don't know about Yuns, but I love to see a good plate of food fixed up. I could just look at it all day long. There's something to me that is just really pretty about a plate of food. Now tonight I'm making a brand new recipe that I found on Pinterest. I'm so excited about it. It's called Cheeseburger in Paradise. And first thing I'm doing is browning up a pound of ground beef and some onions. This 80-20 has a lot of fat, so I don't know if I have showed you how I drain off my ground beef. I just take one of my bowls, like a stoneware one, that will not melt, and I line it with aluminum foil, and then I put my little strainer in it and dump my meat in there. And look at all that nasty grease that's left in there. But I can just let that set up, and then I can just dispose of that grease wrapped up in that aluminum foil. So once I get it back over into my skillet, I'm just going to put in about a half a teaspoon of salt and then about a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And it says a few dashes of the Worcestershire sauce, but I went a little heavy on it. I like it. And it just looked kind of bland. I was worried about it at this point. You know, I was thinking whenever I read it that there just really was not that many ingredients or seasonings in this but let me tell you we are not disappointed in this one I just kind of let all of that get mixed in together and then you can see I did spray my pie pan tonight and this recipe the is not halved this was what it called for for a pie plate full of this now I'm gonna cover it with about a cup or so of shredded cheddar cheese Spread that out nice and we're going to mix up a topping for this. I've got a half a cup of Bisquick in my bowl already and I'm going to add a cup of milk. I had a half a cup measure there. That's why you see me doing that twice. And then I'm going to use two eggs and whisk that together and get it all mixed in real good. Then you're going to pour it over the top of the ground beef and cheese. And I kind of poked around on it a little bit just to kind of get everything covered. And then you're going to put this in a 400 degree oven for about 25 minutes. And mine was done right exactly at 25 minutes. Now you can't have a cheeseburger without some onion rings. These panko breaded onion rings, they're seasoned with salt and cracked black pepper from Kroger's. I've bragged on these before and now they don't have them anymore. I can't find them anywhere. But look at that when it comes out. The best way for me to explain this, the way it tastes to me, it made me think of that breakfast casserole that we've all been eating where you do the cream cheese and the sausage between the crescent rolls. Something about this dish gave me that vibe. It's delicious. Nothing could be any simpler than this right here, but it had the best flavor. Now, I like mine with lettuce and tomato. Heinz 57 and some french fried potatoes. Are there any old parrot heads out there that can finish the next line for me? <laughs> we love cheeseburger in paradise. Then we had leftovers from the last two nights to finish off so I just want to show you a night in the middle of the week real quick where I had a fried chicken tender salad. My husband ate some of these burritos and some chips and cheese. And last but not least tonight, I am finally going to try this Dorito Chicken Casserole. And here's the lineup of the ingredients. The main thing is these Doritos, it calls for this big party size of it. And I had cooked my chicken in my crock pot earlier that day. And I went on the high side with the chicken. I used about three cups. But get the biggest bowl you have. And you're going to start with your shredded chicken in there. Then you're going to add a can of black beans. Of course, they're going to be rinsed and drained. And then add in a can of corn that's been drained. 
one cup of Kobe Monterey Jack cheese. Then save the other cup to put on top. And you're going to throw in a can of Rotel. I put in some green chilies. And then a cup of sour cream. And a can of cream of mushroom soup. And it calls for one tablespoon of taco seasoning. But I read down in the notes that people left on this. And a lot of them said they went heavy on the taco seasoning. So I went ahead and went heavy to begin with. And I started mixing it up. And that just really looked like a lot of food to me. And I could just put the whole rest of that envelope in there. And it was fine. Then you take your Doritos and you just crush them up. I didn't make mine just completely pulverized. I wanted some big chunks in mine. So I just crushed them there in the bag with my hands. Then you take a 9 by 13 casserole dish. And use half of that bag of Doritos in the bottom of it. And then you're going to spread all your mixture. Now I did not use all my mixture. I could have stopped way before I did. I would have had enough of this that I could have made this size of pan twice out of all that. But I just, I kept putting it in and then finally I was like, I just, I need to stop. I can't put all this in here and still have room for the topping. So I left some of it out and just kind of covered up the top. There's what I had left, and that doesn't look like much, but it filled up a quart size bag because that's a huge bowl that I'm mixing in. But I could have had even more. So I thought I'm just going to pull me out some freezer bags and the rest of my shredded chicken that was in the crock pot and this um, filling. I put it in freezer bags and I'm just going to freeze it. And that is definitely enough of that filling that I could make this again just in like a pie plate. That filling goes a long, long way. I just try to get as much air out of stuff like that as I can. Make sure it's sealed up real good. Now I've cooked this in a 350 degree oven for 20 minutes. So I tasted it. It just wasn't warm enough. So I'll give it a few more minutes. And it still wasn't heating up. So then I put some aluminum foil over the top of it. And I cut it up to 375 and I probably cooked it 15 more minutes. Then I pulled it out and you put the rest of your crunched up Doritos on the top of it and the rest of your cheese. And then you're going to put it back down in the oven for another 5 to 7 minutes. Just long enough for that cheese to get melted. Be sure if you have to cut your temperature up, cut it back down when you do this. Um, because I, when I pulled mine out and I started scooping it, I did see my Doritos look like they were maybe on the verge of getting a little bit too done. They were fine, but that's just for next time. This right here, it was so very good. Look at all that gooiness. Everybody loved this dish. I can't tell you, we loved all the dishes this week. We know that we love chicken casserole. But look at all that gooiness. Everything was so good down in there. And those Doritos on the bottom, they do look a little brownish, but they are fine. I had some chopped up some green onions and put on the top with some sour cream. And I started to make some rice with this, but I thought, I'm just going to take it easy on myself tonight. Well, casseroles are supposed to be easy, so we're just going to have a one-dish meal. And there I was tasting that little Dorito that I thought was burnt. It was great. Guys, we loved all of these. We loved this Dorito casserole and this cheeseburger in paradise. We loved that. That was so simple but so good. And we knew we loved the chicken casserole. I hope these are three things that you'll try that when you're busy, you can throw them together. One pot wonders and just have an easy night yourself. Don't forget 
to go over and check out Amanda's channel and be sure and tell her that Mama Mel sent you. And guys, have a great week. I send you love from my kitchen.